What's up guys, welcome to AB Auto. Today, we're gonna to be looking at 16 things to do when you pick up your new or used Mercedes. Now, one of the first things I like to do when picking up a new car is checking the tyre pressures. Tyres from a factory, or even when sitting on a used lot, tend to be overinflated because they're going to be sitting for a while and obviously if they lose pressure, they won't drop too low. If you're new to Mercedes, just a quick tip, uh, generally manufacturers like to keep their tyre inflation instructions here on the door, but Mercedes, they pop it in here on the inside of the fuel cap. Now, this might seem like an obvious one, but my next tip is always check your car for damage. I mean, it's crazy. I've picked up multiple new cars and every single time I picked up a new car, it's always had some type of damage on it. And I'm always glad that I've thoroughly checked it at the dealership because they've always been able to sort it for me straight away. Now, one really good way to find dents in a car if you're worried that it might have any hidden dents or scratches is to put yourself down here and put your head almost to the side here and just look straight down the car. Now you should be able to see the lines of the car perfectly. So if there's any dents or dips, they should pop out to you. Also, don't forget to give the interior a really thorough check too. I once picked up a car, it was a Mercedes actually, it was my C300 coupe and it was spotless. And then I got in the back seats of a coupe, which you might not normally do, and uh, I found a massive chunk out of the back of the seat here. Now, obviously Mercedes were really apologetic about it. And uh, yeah, they repaired it for free, no quibbles. He actually did it the next day. He gave me his car as a courtesy car. So make sure you find it while you're at the dealership and they will take care of you. Now, if you've just bought a modern Mercedes or even an old one, it will probably come with something called Mercedes Me, which is a neat little app on your phone. You can use this app on your phone to control cool features in the car, and you can also use it to customize it and monitor it. It's very cool, it's rich with features. I've got a whole video on it, and I'll link it up there if you wanna check it out. Now, Mercedes Me is a service that has to be activated by your dealer. So when you're picking your car up, make sure you speak to them and get them to link your Mercedes Me account with your car. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do when you pick up a new car is sync up your phone to the car's Bluetooth system. So let's jump in the car and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is press the telephone button. It will come up with this message asking us to ensure that Bluetooth's activated on our phone and it's discoverable. Hit start search on the system. Now it's gonna scan for devices and you can see it's immediately picked up my phone, which is great. It's a Samsung Galaxy S10. Then you just hit okay, please wait. Now, a confirmation passcode will appear on the screen. You can check this corresponds with the code that appears on your phone. Then you hit OK. Then it connects to the profiles. And there you have it. Your phone is now fully synced up to your car. Now your phone is synced up, you can view all your contacts. Then we have your call list. Here you can receive and read text messages. Devices lets you see a list of devices connected. Say, for example, you wanted to sync up more than one phone, you can access and choose them here. Then in options, you can configure a few more bits in more detail. But that's it guys, it's that simple. One thing you might not know about your Mercedes is inside it comes with a TCU, which is a transmission control unit. So if you have an automatic transmission, this is gonna be the brains of your gearbox. Your Mercedes has a progressive gearbox, and what this does is it learns how you drive and it adapts. So for example, if you drive the car slowly and carefully for a period of time, it's gonna calibrate the gears and be less aggressive and less sporty. When you pick up a new or used car, I highly recommend you reset the TCU, because this is gonna give you your own unique driving profile to how you drive. So if you want a car that's more comfortable, reset your TCU and drive it comfortably for 15 minutes. Or if you want a car that's really aggressive and sporty, reset your TCU and drive it like a loony for 15 minutes. Now, if you do fancy resetting your TCU, don't worry, I have a full detailed video walkthrough of this process. I'll pop a link at the top there and in the description below so you can watch that video. Now let's talk about some cool features of Mercedes, their hidden storage zones. One thing I love about Mercedes is there's always some cool hidden storage zones in the interior. So let's jump in and I'll show you the hidden storage zones in my C43 right here. So it's always really good to look for the hidden storage zones in a new car. I mean, especially if you're buying used, because who knows what you might find. 
So let's take a look now at the hidden storage zones in this car. So let's start off by opening up the center console storage. Here we've got a nice large storage space. It's deep and can hold plenty of things. But if I flash this light here now, you'll see there's actually a secret little shelf here at the back. It's a handy little spot for storing little bits. As for example here, I've got one of my GoPro adapter screws. But you could put anything small in here like coins, money, notes. Most people have no idea it's there. If you picked up your Mercedes used, it's definitely worth checking. You never know what you might find here. Now at the back here, we've also got this little bit at the bottom that you can pull down. And you get a 12 volt socket. And also here on the left, you've got some nice little extra storage. Behind both the driver and passenger rear seats, you've got this nice little pouch here. It pulls out like this and it's great for storing documents, papers, or even books. It's a good little hiding spot. Now in the front up here, we have this little compartment. You press here and it drops down. Now officially, I would call this a glasses and sunglasses compartment. It's really quite handy. You can fit your glasses in here like mine, but you could really pop anything you want in here. It's really simple and it flips back in place nicely with one push. Down the side here as well, you've also got this nice little netted area that I like to keep some quick interior detailing spray in. It's really handy to have, especially if you have the piano black interior, which as you know, is notorious for fingerprints and dust, and really you just want to have something in hand. Whenever I'm in a traffic jam or waiting for something, I just grab this super soft microfiber cloth and give the good old interior a gentle wipe down to remove any dust and fingerprints. Lastly, let's check the center seat in the back of your car. This one here pulls down to reveal a nice little hidden storage area. There's also two little cup holders here that flip in and out. If you're wondering who these cute little characters are in the back, that's Bing and Sula. If you haven't guessed it already, yep, I'm a proud dad. Amelia, would you like comfort mode or sport plus? Yay! My next tip is to pick yourself up a dash cam and get it professionally fitted to your new car. With all those scammers on the road and all those quite frankly terrible drivers, it's always a good idea to get yourself a dash cam so you can protect yourself. So when I picked up my new Mercedes, the first thing I did was get myself a dash cam professionally fitted. You're gonna to wanna to go down the professional fitting route unless you're confident in yourself because you're not gonna want cables or anything dragging around to spoil your nice interior. Here's my dash cam here. It's a Thinkware F800 Pro. It also comes with a rear facing camera so you're covered at the front and the back of your car. The cables are all routed under the headliner so it's super tidy as you can see here. The dash cam also has a parking record feature. It's great if you're ever in a public car park or if you're worried about someone hitting your car. Now, if you're looking to take care of your car, you're gonna to wanna to invest in some type of paint protection. But I highly recommend you skip and avoid the paint protection that the dealers are gonna provide for you. Because quite frankly, it's expensive and it's all in the preparation and they're just time and time and time in cars. And although I'm sure they do a good job in some cases and I don't wanna completely um, put down dealers, you better off finding yourself a professional detailer that is his bread and butter. He does it for a living. He protects cars, he makes them look stunning. Find yourself a really good pro. So when it comes to paint protection, you've got quite a few options, but I would recommend the classic ceramic coating. It's gonna make your paint work nice and smooth. It's gonna give it a nice shine all year round. It's also gonna make it much easier to clean and more enjoyable because dirt will just fly off. And also it's gonna keep cleaner for longer, so you'll have to wash it less. Now, another thing I'd recommend is PPF, which is paint protection film. And what it is, it's a thin layer of wrap that you usually often put around the bumper. And it basically protects your car against stone chips and other things. Um, you can get the whole car covered if you want, but it's very expensive. I would recommend getting just the bumper covered because this is the area that picks up the most stone chips. In fact, I really wish I'd done this on mine. It's, it's too late now because the bumper needs respraying, but just in two years of, you know, driving the car, I mean, I drive it fast, obviously, I mean, you've seen my videos. But I never do anything silly like tailgate anyone. I always leave a nice big gap because I don't like to do that because that's just a dick move. And, uh, <laughs> and I don't like stone chips too, but I'll show you right now in my car, I've got some horrible stone chips on the front. And if I just protected it with some PPF, it would have been absolutely fine. And to be honest, the cost to respray the bumper would have been similar to the cost to wrap it. So if you guys are thinking about this, I highly recommend it. It's a great thing to do, but do it when your car is new and fresh so you've got a perfect bumper protected. Next up, we're gonna be talking about these lovely lights here. Now they look awesome, but they also are very functional too. So if you have the high beam assist, which basically blocks your lights out on the other side of the road so when oncoming traffic's come, they don't get blinded, then you have gotta make sure when you pick up the car that it's set up correctly. 
So in the settings of the car, you'll find that you can set it for traffic oncoming on the left or on the right. Now, based on your region, you're gonna be driving on a different side of the road. So make sure you set it up accordingly. I'll just pop in now and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's set up your lights. First thing you need to do is press the car button. Then you scroll down using the wheel to light settings. Hit enter. In here, you scroll down to dipped beams. So you go into dipped beams, then you've got right side traffic or left side traffic. Now this can be a bit confusing, so I'll try to explain. So here you have to select the side of the road you're driving on, not the side of the road the oncoming traffic's coming. So if you live in the UK, it's left side traffic. And if you live in Europe or in America and you drive on the right side of the road, then you select right side traffic. So that's it guys, make sure you've selected the correct side of the road to keep those drivers happy. Now Mercedes have a setting called acoustic lock, which I'll show you right now. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that this is the setting Mercedes came up with to help prevent a old school type of theft. This is when you lock your car and someone's sitting around the corner of a box that intercepts the signal of the key and prevents the car from locking. So you think your car's locked, but it's actually unlocked. And then when you leave, they go into your car, they open it up and they steal your possessions. But if I'm honest with you guys, I personally find this to be pretty annoying. I mean, let's listen again. I don't get it, I don't like it at all. And if we jump in the car now, I'll show you exactly how to disable that, because that's the first thing you should do when you pick up your Mercedes. So to get rid of the acoustic lock noise, you want to press the car button again. Then this time we're gonna go all the way down into vehicle settings. Then in here, scroll down and you will see we've got a tick box here called acoustic lock. You simply toggle it on and off. Okay guys, so the next one is learn all about your intelligent Mercedes key. Now, this key right here, it doesn't only look awesome, it's got loads of really super cool features too. It's basically a mini computer and I have a really popular video here on my channel that explains five tips and tricks with this key. I'm gonna link it up here, check it out, learn these tips. They also work with the older keys too. They're really good. It's such a brilliant key. So that's it guys, there you go. Oh, you run flat tires. Honestly, sometimes I feel sorry for them. They receive so much hate online, but to be honest, they are pretty rubbish. So here's a video of me driving my car with run flat tires. Now here's the exact same video pretty much with me not using run flat tires. So what you guys just saw in that video there was the classic Mercedes crabbing issue. So if you guys are new to the channel, I'm gonna be completely honest with you now and tell you what I did. I basically took the factory fitted run flat tires, I tossed them in the bin and replaced them with the awesome Michelin Pilot Sports. And as you saw in the video there, switching the tires out, getting rid of the run flats completely fixed the problem. So I highly recommend if you pick up a new or used Mercedes, get rid of those run flats as soon as possible. Now, if you are planning on changing your tires, you're definitely gonna need this one. So when you pick up your car, make sure that they've included the wheel key so you can unlock your lug nuts and take your wheels off. Now, it doesn't matter if it's an old car or a new car, if it's got alloy wheels, chances are it's gonna have a key to unlock one of the lug nuts on the wheel so you can take the wheels off. If you haven't guessed it, the idea of this key is to prevent people from stealing your wheels. So one of the first things you wanna check when you pick up your car, whether it's new or used, is that that key is located somewhere in the car because you're gonna need it later down the line. Now usually you can find it here in the glove box. It will be in a little box like this. Here's mine. So there's Mercedes on it. And in here, you've got the key. Now, if it's not in here, it might be in the boot. So check the boot, check underneath the little carpeting bit. Um, just really make sure before you pick your car up, guys, that you've got this, because it's so important. The next tip is to make sure your parking sensors are set up correctly. Okay, so to set up the parking sensors, you hit the car button again. Then you go into assistance. Then you go down to camera and park assist. So in here, you go down to set warning tone. Then you've got the warning tone volume here. You can adjust it as high as you want. Then you've got your warning tone pitch. 
This adjusts the level of sound so you can have a high pitched beep or a much deeper beep. Then you've got the warn early box. I like to always have this tick so my parking sensors are always warning me way ahead of any obstacles. And the last one is audio faded during warning tones. What this does is it fades the volume of your radio or your music you're listening to so you can always hear and focus on the parking sensor beeps. So that's it guys, that's how you fully customize your parking sensors. So the next thing I want to recommend guys, especially if you have keyless entry, is a Faraday pouch. Now a Faraday pouch is a little pouch that you pop your key on and it completely blocks the signal and renders the key useless. Now if you're unfamiliar with this, you're probably wondering why would you want to render your key useless? And it is because of keyless theft. Now what I mean by keyless theft is that's when someone steals your car without even needing your key. I've touched on this a few times because I think it's so important. In fact, actually, one of my neighbors a few weeks ago on their CCTV caught someone trying to do this. They basically sit outside your house with a computer. It's quite a big device. They usually have it in a bag. And what it does is it boosts the signal of your key. Then they use your key that's in your house to unlock your car. And then you just drive off with it. It's a silent, it's, it's such an easy way to steal a car and it's terrifying. But don't worry, there's loads of measures you can do to protect it. And one of the best ones and the safest ones is to get a Faraday pouch. Okay, so here's my Faraday pouch right here. Open it up, it's lined with a special material that completely blocks the key signal. If I take my key here, as you can see, it fits into the pouch nicely. Let's seal it up. As you can see, once I insert my key into the pouch, the car no longer detects it, making it impossible for thieves to steal your car using this scary method. Now there is another safety measure you can take, and it's available on all modern Mercedes and also some of the old ones too, and that is the double tap lock. So if I get my key in focus here and double tap lock, Damn it, you can see, for the making this video, I enabled the acoustic lock, and how annoying is that? Anyway, sorry, if you tap double lock, then you'll see there's a little red light that flickers there, and that basically means that it's deactivating your key when it locks the car, and this prevents the keyless theft. But personally, I like to have double protection, so I do this, and then I put it in a Faraday pouch. I'll leave you guys a link in the description for the Faraday pouch I use. It's a good one, and what's good about it is it comes with two pouches. So you've got one for your primary key, and you also get one for your spare key. Because don't forget, your spare key, if that's active, they can use that too. So you might have that stored away in a cupboard somewhere, and you might not realize they could use that to steal your car. So make sure you put them in two bags. Okay, so for the last tip, I wanna talk about gap insurance. Now, gap insurance can sometimes get a bit confusing, and to be honest, it's picked up a bad rap sometimes because people think it's one of those expensive extras that the dealers try to flog at you when you buy a car. But I'm gonna break it down now and explain it because I think it's really useful. In fact, I think it's essential, especially if you have a car like this, which was quite expensive. So let's paint this scenario in our head. I've just picked up this car from the dealership, from new. It costs 60 grand. I've driven it away and I get really unlucky and something happens as I leave the dealership and the car gets written off. Now it's okay, right? Because I've got insurance. They'll pay for the car and I can get another one. Not exactly, because when I left the dealership, this car lost like five grand in value just from like tax and depreciation alone. So what's gonna happen now is the insurance company are gonna pay me 55 grand and then I'm gonna be five grand short. So I'm not gonna just get another car. So what gap insurance is, is it ensures that gap of depreciation. And this can range and change based on the value of the car. I mean, you could be saving 20 grand here with gap insurance, and it's not that expensive. You usually pay it once for four years. So if I had gap insurance, the gap insurance company would pay me the five grand, and then my insurance company would pay me the 55K, and then I'd be back at 60K. And what you can do as well is you can buy um, straight to retail price gap insurance. So it guarantees that if something happens to your car and it gets written off, you have enough money to buy the exact same car in brand new, even if the prices of the car change or anything. So it's a really, really good thing to have. And if you're buying a new car, especially an expensive car like a performance AMG, it is a must have in my opinion. So there we have it guys, that is my 16 tips of things to do when you pick up your new or used Mercedes. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button because it always helps me in the channel out. If you want more content on this car and just other great content, lots of tips and tricks. I mean, we have tons of fun with the C43, but you know, if you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the subscribers. It really helps the channel out. We've done so well this year. I'm really excited. I've got some awesome content on the way. And also guys, I did make this video in mind that I know a lot of people watch my channel, they order this car, and then they're anxiously waiting and they're getting that fix before while they wait for it to be delivered. So I made this video for you guys as well, because I thought it might be really helpful for when you pick your cars up. 
So with that in mind, post in the comments, I wanna hear about your cars that you're waiting to pick up or planning to buy that you're gonna use these tips on. And of course, if you've got any more tips that I haven't included here, please post them in the comments because people are gonna read these, it's gonna help them. And I also love to read tips. You know, I love to read and learn new things myself too. And I love reading the comments. I'll try my best to respond to everyone, but for now, have a fantastic day and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.